<laughs> it's it's the Boston fight song of the week. You almost just dropped your phone, which would have made bad podcasting, but probably the hardest I would have laughed. It would have been an absolute hit. Look at poor Tommy Heinsohn. Oh. Look at him. He's feeling it. 0-2 Celtics start. Red Sox eliminated from the playoffs. He would be smoking in his grave right now. Patriots 2-4. and four. I don't care about that. But people care about people that. People care. You care about football a little bit, don't you? Um, oh, welcome to Boston Centric. I'm Mike. This is Dan. <laughs> uh, yeah, you care a little bit about that. I mean, you text when football things are happening. I just want to say hi to you guys. <laughs> Yeah, we've the silliest sports text thread uh, with James. It's really, yeah, bizarre. Yeah, it's actually the only place I write jokes to. So I'll be like <laughs> reading, through. <laughs> reading through. I hate Marcus much, Smart. Is that a bit? How much material have you gotten from that text, Jane? I hope they're catching me picking my nose. Well, uh, we're videotaping. The, uh, <laughs> it's recorded. Um, that the uh, no, I would. Uh, yeah, any joke I've had that's worked in the last couple years. Jesus, I've not been using that thread correctly. I haven't gotten shit out of that thread. Really? Nothing. I mean, it's not, not. You guys haven't helped. We've helped. But uh, you, you've specifically said, "Is this good?" And we've said, "Yeah, uh, I want yes, a yes or no." Even when it didn't work, it's a yes or no. We've supported you. I feel like it's a yes or no. We've we've added bits. We've like changed phrasing. Okay, I changed phrasing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. What, how much so you, more help do you want? Writing the whole joke? We've given <laughs> you, like, our opinions on it. We've rewritten it. Jesus. There was a comedian named Dale. I can't remember his name, but he was around, like, five years ago, six years ago. Okay. And he goes, uh, no, longer now. He goes, hey, I'm thinking of writing a joke about Bush. And he's like, I'm like, oh, what's the joke? And he goes, ah, just about him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for someone finally takes on Bush. <laughs> Somebody. Did he know which one? <laughs> Huh? Did he did he know which one? <laughs> there were a few comedians like that when I started. I'm like, wow, these guys have great Iraq stuff. And then <laughs> a few years in, people yeah. explained, oh, no, those were old jokes from the first Gulf War yeah. that they just got to say Gulf War again. That is one of the interesting things about political comedians is yeah. like when they've aged and they're still talking about Reagan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, you know, bad shit's happened since then, right? Do you think there were, like, vaudeville comedians in World War II that were like, sweet, I get to bring, bring back, like, the invasion of Belgium bit again? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could probably recycle a lot of World War I material. It was the same, same bad guys. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. You had to throw away your depression material, <laughs> which used to be a very different yes. sort of bit. <laughs> I mean, it's depression bits very popular now as well. <laughs> but they played differently. All right. You ever been selling an apple on the side of the road? And you're... <laughs> so speaking of depression, which team do we want to talk about first? Um, well, always the Celtics. Always the Celtics. All right. So what was, there were two awful losses in very different ways. We got destroyed by the Raptors in our home opener. Uh, we had an amazing comeback against the, the, the Knicks in our actual season. Did we opener, have an amazing and then we comeback or shortly. did they just kick the ball into the stands a couple of times? Now that was a good comeback. They had to make shots. They made plays. Yeah, I mean, the Knicks, if they lost that game, it would have been more of them blowing it than us winning. I mean, it would have been bad. Anytime that a team gives up a huge lead, yeah, there's yeah. some level of so, them blowing So you it. could also say we almost lost by double digits to the Knicks who aren't that good. <laughs> Lots of shit's almost happened, Dan. Yeah, yeah. But then... What, what actually happened? Which would be concerning, and then even more concerning... The Raptors, who fucking suck, yeah. <laughs> just beat the fucking shit out of us. We all need to hope that Scotty Barnes is the new Michael Jordan to make us feel a little bit better about yeah. that. Yeah, do you boss. think Jalen was depressed or something that game? I don't know. I've never seen a guy be better and then look sadder. I don't know. Did it something was, unwoke happen? I, I mean, lots of unwoke stuff is happening Too, oh, regularly. We, we got to keep him away from the papers on game days. I'm really worried that the Celtics team, with all the talent that's there, is just not fitting together correctly. Obviously, it's two games in. We need to give it some time. Okay. But the, the fear is still there that maybe they ju just do not like playing together. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I sent it as a joke text on another thread. Okay. That, that Jalen Brown mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, Jason Tatum are both great, and they're you know, pretty good together. Yeah. But there's a little more friction than you'd like. Yeah. They're kind of like basketball anal. 
<laughs> as in they're and, they're, and that, they're, they're very I, particular. I added that one time they, uh, I made that point on WEI, and mm-hmm. they didn't respond. They just went straight into the one eight seven seven cars for kids ad, uh, which I felt was even less appropriate. You were on WEI and made an anal. Joke? I made that part up. Okay, that part was a goof. <laughs> Have you ever been on EEI? I called them when I was twelve years old, and I didn't get through. <laughs> What is the word? You've done local radio though, right? Like you've done like appearances. And I think I did Maddie stuff. in the morning or something okay. like that. I, I did the Bob and Tom show. How they was that? hated me. They did. Yeah, I didn't talk. I didn't want to talk. It was too early, and they have to like pretend to laugh at like some guy playing a fucking guitar song or something like that. Yeah, it just felt very fake. And yeah. I, maybe I just suck. Nah, you know, it's, uh, morning radio for comedians is really there's such a long tradition of it, and it's the worst possible combination of things it's putting steak together with fruit it's it, they, yeah. they don't go together at all because in the morning people think they do it's like oh these guys are funny in the morning these guys are funny at night and you promote stuff but it's the morning guys are like tired and they're all a little bit bitter because they know they're like losing yeah, some of the last hoping years you're of their not going to say something offensive <laughs> Wait, there's no- I, I think they're hoping you are really a lot of times i did morning radio lauren and wally i did and they were great uh-huh. They they very much were just like, how do you want to do this? We just want to set you up for bits, and then we're just going to plug your show. Yeah. And it was great. They were like, they tell used, some of your I jokes. I used to work at the golf course uh, that they would come play at after. Nice. They would come play at Blue Hill Country Club, and they would sit in the golf cart, and they said no one, they would never speak to each other. Never? No. Well, like an old married. Get along okay. Yeah, on the radio, but they're like an old married couple. Like, after four hours, you're yeah. going to... Well, but at least you're, I mean, you might be quiet together, but you're comfortable together. Yeah. They were choosing What if you still together? carried around like a button that job. made noises? <laughs> they, they might. That's their caddy. <laughs> caddy, make a farting sound. <laughs> but that was, that, that was good morning radio. And then they're the morning radio hosts who just want to like throw you under the bus all the time. Be like, so yeah, what? What do you think about Trump? Tell us about, uh, yeah, what, what do you yeah, think yeah. about what he said about women? You're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Don't do that. Just I've got bits. Let's just do bits. I think he's a good guy with cool ideas. <laughs> <laughs> On EEI, that would have gotten you, like, that was Oh, sorry, I thought we were crowds. talking about John Gruden. Oh, do we want to talk about Gruden <laughs> no, at all? No, no, we yeah. can talk about him later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just bring up all the sadness this week. This is yeah, all yeah. the uncomfortable stuff. Um, well, yeah, any kind of raw, raw coach, I think is a fucking idiot to begin with. But if he's a racist and sexist, that's probably even worse. Probably. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a powerful statement, man. Well, I don't, I don't want to have to make a retraction. No, that's good. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking ahead. That's our probably in everything. <laughs> the Holocaust, probably bad. Probably bad. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I don't know that's, anything. That's the new official I don't know Texas anything, school but it's, board it opinion. Sounds, it sounds bad. I've heard bad things about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, speaking of the Holocaust, uh, the Red Sox and the ALCS. I'm out $80. Well, you, you, I, I didn't think you cared about baseball, and you still bet yeah, money I on bet it? Yeah, I bet on it to, to, just so I can feel something. <laughs> the, I, the, you say just enough subtle things that I'm, like, legitimately worried about you sometimes. All right. <laughs> do, do I need to worry about you? Just, no, you can feel just keep saying yes or no to my jokes and, and re, reword the phrasing. That's really, everything. That's as much as I have to offer Everything's going to be fine. Health. That's what Hemingway's editor did. <laughs> would, you, would you bet on like FanDuel? Where do you bet when you bet? I got a guy. Oh, you just got a local bookie guy? A friend. All right. I don't even bet for real. I, I do. We do friendly bets. Do you pay money when you lose? What I do is once once one of us is down, it used to be once one of us was down $75, one guy would take the other guy golfing. Oh, okay. And then um, yeah, I, and then if I won, I'd get to fuck him. Perfect. No. Now we, now no, we do. I mean, that's, I, now we're back to Jalen and Jason. <laughs> huh? Jalen. <laughs> Who's the top there? I, I mean, you take turns. I don't know if I even want that. That is, God, this is like the, the 80s comedy green room <laughs> like a conversation that we all imagined was happening all the time. Wait, also the 90s comedy green room, in all fairness. <laughs> hey, who, how do you decide? And really, the early 2000s still. And, and, and last week. Certainly the early 2000s. Yeah, definitely the early 2000s. I remember 2000s. like Jim Gaffigan opening a late night set with like a gay joke and a retard joke. What was his gay joke? He didn't use it. He, he would say... Uh, 
It's like for a while I was a vegetarian and my dad was like, no son of mine's gay. Yeah, but that's a joke about his dad being homophobic, right? Yeah, but how do we know he didn't just think, hey, my dad bets what I would say to my kids, so I'll say my dad said it to me. <laughs> You're delving very deeply into Jim Gaffigan. Not delving deep. very deeply at all. That's one delve. <laughs> that's deeply. It was one delve is just I'm what not he actually strong said. enough to delve deeply <laughs> with one delve. Man, before you had diabetes, you delved, man. I delved very deep. Oh, you have no idea how deep Dan used to delve. Yeah. Now, right in there. <laughs> for fear of hypoglycemia, <laughs> I got to keep my delving low. So, do, do you feel better or worse after watching the first two Celtics games than you did before the season started? Way worse. Why? Well, I, I, it's also like super early, so you can't be too too crazy about it. These guys have a shorter training camp or whatever. But Marcus Smart is not a starting point guard. Marcus Smart should be a sixth man, and I don't know why we all keep pretending that that's not true. I think more like an eighth man. Dennis Schroeder should be starting, and Marcus Smart should be coming off the bench. Yeah, yeah. Even still, <laughs> that is that is bad. Why? Because why he's making six million dollars a year. Yeah, the, the good teams have good point guards. Dennis Schroeder is just better as a starter. Marcus Smart is better with the bench team. Sure. I mean, if Marcus Smart could just be not here, I think it would be, <laughs> be better. He's honestly. good. He helps with the team. It's just he, I don't think he meshes well with that front line. Yeah, he's be, great when you bring in some of the bench guys and he can just kind of be the energy guy. Um, He's too old to be the energy guy now. Why? He's 29. He's in his absolute prime. He's as good as he should ever be. And that is still not very good. Manu Ginobili was six man the entire like Spurs run, basically. Manu Ginobili is one of the best players of his generation. Yeah, we're just talking about whether or not you should be a sixth man or not if you're good. He, and he is very good. Uh, but I'm, I would like a better sixth man. Look, we'd all like an amazing <laughs> sixth man. There's a reason somebody is a sixth man. You can be very good and still be a sixth man. He's just not very valued around the league. He's not. He's making 11 million bucks a year. Making a little bit more than that now. He just re-signed a new deal. He's making a little more than 11. Uh, I, I would have much rather gotten uh, Frenchie on the next. Evan Fournier? Fournier? Fournier. Nah. For well, 17. he got 20. So he's 17 this year. I looked it up yesterday. 17 this year? Yeah, yeah. You, it escalates, MS, though, escalate, not, yeah. whatever the hell. But what doesn't? <laughs> but, it, I mean, you just got to look at the contract average. Okay, but regardless, he scores and Marcus Smart does not score. Okay. Like I want he scores some. I want a guard that And he defends and Evan Fournier doesn't defend at all. Evan Fournier doesn't distribute at all. He just shoots. He's bigger. <laughs> he's six seven. But he just shoots. Marcus Smart doesn't matter is not if you're taller if you're not doing guys anything with it. Him. There's guys that hit shots. Like you'll you, Marcus Smart will hit an open three here and there. It, it, but if you're but not getting rebounds, what is what does height matter if you're only shooting? Good podcast material. I stretched my arms out <laughs> to the sides. <laughs> And I just showed you, just by doing this, when you're taller, you are infinitely better than a guy that only did this. Yeah, if the other guy also only did this. The problem is, Evan Fournier just stands there with his slightly longer arms. Yes. And Marcus Smart actually moves around and interferes with the other team's offense and makes plays. If he makes so many fucking plays, then why did he only get 11 million bucks? Look, because he is only so good. Exactly. He is only so good. I'm you not know what is so I'm good not is? I'm saying Marcus is so Smart good is Jason Tatum. Equals bad. No. He is bad. No. That is not the same thing. Okay, well. Most teams would like to have Marcus Smart. And if you just gave Marcus Smart away. Most teams could have very you easily gotten Marcus, Marcus Smart, Smart. They just had to give him 12 million no. bucks. Like, he wasn't a free <laughs> agent. That's not true. He was not a free agent. But why did we sign him? Because we wanted to contract? extend him. He had another year on his deal, and they extended him. So basically, they're signing him right now, giving him some security before he becomes a free agent. Okay. And I think they're also looking at it and going, let's see how he fits in with this team. And if we don't like him, then come the trade deadline after December, we can trade him. Hey, who wants this guy who sucks? He does not suck. Sucks. You have. A he seems like a great guy. When he talks, I like him. And he's You a have a pathological hatred of Marcus Smart that I've never understood. He's one of my least favorite Celtics. I understand. Ever. He it's helped. actually called the Mark Blunt list. Y you can, even on your most unreasonable day, you acknowledge that Marcus Smart is exceptionally better than Marcus, Mark Blunt. For a three-month stretch, Mark Blunt was a fucking beast. 
his contract year. It was awesome. He was 20 and 10 for like a hot minute. He did not average 20 and 10 for three months. That was an exaggeration, but to the computer. <laughs> I'm telling you, he fucking killed it in his contract year for like the last half of the year. I want and Mark then he Blunt signed the deal. And where then he, he even averaged he 15 showed, and 8. And, and then he happen. showed up smoking cigars. It's not going to bear out for the whole year. He this was going to be a difficult thing to look up. Show me. You're going to have to look up. It's at, the easiest thing in the world to look up. No, because you can't basketball reference it because the beginning of the year, he still sucked. And then he saw that the Celtics were going to be able to re-sign him because they didn't have anybody else on their team. Points eight, rebounds five. What was his best year when, when we had him? We're looking at 12 and four there. 12.4 and... 12 and four. Not enough on boards. See, it's not going to bear out though because he kicked ass for the last half of the year. It was way worse. For the last half of the year, I mean, it, to get to, tw like, if he averaged 20, he would have had to have averaged four the rest of the year. Yes. That's what I'm telling you happened. There was no time where he averaged four points and then spent three months getting 20 points, and then it just ended. I'm telling you that's what happened. All right. You're, you're, you're smoking <laughs> crack. Huh? Or you're just smoking. You're, you're smoking Marcus Smart crack. If he didn't do it, this. Which is the crack you it, smoke it, to irrationally view it, players it, you If hate. he didn't do this, then how come 18 years have passed and I still have my most hated players list after him? Yeah, I don't know. Usually, Ricky like, Davis usually is on things that? become clearer and more accurate the longer we remember them and the farther away from them we move. Actually, usually hatred quells with time. Uh, the 50 year reunion of the Battle of Gettysburg, they did the same pickets charge, but everybody hugged at the end. And if I saw Mark Blunt now, I'd punch him in the fucking balls. Yeah, I don't think everyone's over the Civil War. Those few guys they got hugged together for at a Gettysburg. Picture. Those like 20 guys who are old and about to just trying to get into heaven. Yeah, yeah. And this is still me young and still mad. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm young. When you get older and closer to heaven, you're going to hug Mark Blunt if you feel like that's going to be the deal breaker. I feel like more people get, some people get or, more ornery with age, too. You're definitely going to get more ornery with age, but there are going to be moments where you're like, oh, do I have to get good? Do I have to be a little bit nicer? There's, I think there's like this long stretch of being older where you get more ornery, yeah, but and then you, if you know you're about to die, you feel a little bit bad, and you just want to cover your bases. But wasn't that these. in a more godly time? If anything, science is going to have a bigger say on society in the coming century. Science isn't doing that well. It isn't doing that well. No. Is it here? It is. <laughs> I mean, in this room? Sure. No. Sure. All right. Did you have any Patriots thoughts as we're like going through the worst Patriot season of the last 20 years? Well, I kind of think the Patriots are like the Celtics. I think they're hoping to win with defense. Uh huh. And I don't think that works. No, they've been terrible defensively this year. Which is amazing. Usually when the coach's son takes over a part of the team, it's just great. <laughs> Works with car dealerships. <laughs> <laughs> We've taken the Ernie Bach Jr. approach. Hey, son, you're not... NFL defense. Hey, sir, you're not taking our luxury tax money and putting it up your nose, are you? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> don't worry about a thing. <laughs> I, I mean... I... I don't like that stupid haircut he has. Steve? Yeah. Or Ernie Bach Jr.? Um, is Steve Belichick? That's Steve his Belichick, kid's name. Yeah. He's got a mullet. Yeah, that's a winning. If you're winning and you have that haircut, you're colorful. You're colorful. Yeah. And if you lose and you look like a fucking asshole. Yeah. And the worst thing about being a fan right now, and obviously it's been 20 amazing years, six Super Bowls. We have nothing to complain about during this time. But when your coach's son has taken over a failing part of the team, it's not like he's going to fire him. Mm -hmm. You need to fire everybody to get rid of that one guy. That one kid is bulletproof. He's not going anywhere. No, it's almost like uh, when the coaches make themselves the president of the operations, too. You need to be able to fire right. the coach. But at least he's still <laughs> the same guy. Yeah, but when that guy's failing in his job, you can go, all right, well, you're failing, so we're getting rid of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, when that guy is still the like, track record of being the greatest head coach of all time, are you willing to fire him just to get rid of the defensive coordinator who is no. also his son? But I also, it's hard to have a really good defense when your team doesn't score. Yeah. Is this Polly Shore taking over the comedy store? What? This is like a oh, child taking you, over the I business. Thought, yeah. I thought you were saying I just sounded like the weasel. No, 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 no. no. Uh, Although the comedy store, like 15 years ago, was you know a disaster, mm -hmm. and now it's one of the hottest clubs in well, the country. Well, because Polly Shore it's wasn't running it again. though. They gave it to the kid from uh, 
Norm McDonald's po- partner from his podcast turned it around. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought Polly. That guy's the booker of the comedy store. I did not know that. And he that he came over from the Tempe Improv. Oh, cool. And he turned the whole club around. I guess this is. I mean, I can't even stress yeah. enough. So what we're how, saying how not connected is to the we got to get Norm McDonald's partner to be our new defensive coordinator. Perfect. I mean, <laughs> as I think he might be free of a job now. Yeah, being Norm McDonald's partner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's still running the comedy store, according to you. Um, but yes, yeah, that with sounds, Norm gone, that sounds like it'll keep you busy. I mean, at the very least, we, he might be in the market for new friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> strange older friend. Yeah. Can be Bill Belichick. We're here. Yeah, yeah. We're here. We can be but strange older it, friends. It is harder to have a good defense if your offense isn't scoring, because the best thing you can do for your defense is to get a touchdown and then kick the ball through the end zone and make them start at the 20. Right now, I don't, I don't think the offense is the problem. I mean, currently, the fact of the matter is the defense just can't get off the field. Every, we drive, scored, the, every drive the other team has is like a successful 80-yard drive. Have we scored 30 yet in the game? We haven't had the ball enough. I mean, every time the other team gets the ball, they keep it. We never force a punt. Yeah. We never get a turnover. We've actually, for the percentage of possessions that we've had, we've scored okay. Okay. Mac Jones has played pretty well. All right. Especially for not having any quality receivers. Yeah, I don't know the names of any of our receivers. They're not worth remembering. No. Take that, New England receivers. Yeah. Ray Carruth. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Is he one of them? No. No. Do you know who Ray Carruth was? Uh, he fell off after, like, his third year. I remember that. Ray Carruth. Well, he went to jail. Yeah, I know who Ray Carruth was. I brought him <laughs> up. <laughs> 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 but honestly, there's a glint in your eye sometimes. Yeah, where you're like, I heard this name. This and is I a said receiver. He fell Let's off bring after his third year because he went to jail for <laughs> killing his wife. I feel bad. I feel like I I <laughs> underestimated you there. I'm like, it's it's entirely possible Dan has no idea. <laughs> and he just said two two, two random <laughs> names that happened to be a wide receiver that killed his wife. No, I think you knew that Ray Carruth was a wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. But then you're like, this is a guy that was famous for some reason, right? Yeah, yeah. it was another guy, something <laughs> Juice, The Simpsons. OJ yeah. Simpson. Like, yeah. Would you look up his stats? He was insanely good. Um, yeah, they were talking about like his, for a five year stretch for a running back. I think mm-hmm. he might've had the most in a five year stretch or something yeah. like that. Yep. And they were doing that today at how many yards it was. It was weird. Uh, Frank Gore had the most yards of anybody in the last decade. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Frank Gore's just never hurt. Yeah. He's, he's always he's, there. He's the Foo Fighters. Yeah. It's never that good. It's never that bad. Just good enough to make another album. Yeah. And then before you know it. Foo Fighters put on a decent show for three hours. You always feel a little bit better when Frank Gore's mm-hmm. around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the Foo Fighters are almost like the feature act that did it for 20 years. And you're like, wow, you finally put... Good for you. They're essentially me. Good for you guys. <laughs> Except for they're way more successful. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't... If I was in Nirvana, though, before I did stand-up comedy, yeah. people would be like, whoa. Wow. And look at this guy. <laughs> this guy went from Nirvana to stand-up. Yeah, yeah. He's headlining Knicks now. If Chris Novoselic could just put some <laughs> jokes together. I'm assuming he was in Nirvana? He was a bass player in Nirvana. Okay. He threw a guitar up once at the VMAs. He hit himself in the head. Oh, did he? Yeah. He said, uh, yeah, I never would have known that. The third guy in Nirvana. Okay. Absolutely does not exist in my head. You could have made up a complete other name and said that was the bassist in Nirvana, and I would have believed you. Can you name a lot of bassists? No. No. Oh, okay. Getty Lee. All right. It's the one. I feel like that's the one that m- most people would know. You don't know Ge- Gun Ge- to your head. You don't know Geezer Butler? No. Who's that? He's the bass player for Black Sabbath. Okay. <laughs> if you say so. If you well, say see, so, I'm taking maybe your Maybe I'll just for bring it. up shit like that and you won't challenge me on fucking Mark <laughs> Blunt having a good year. Mark Blunt did not have a good year. Mark Blunt did not have three good months. Yes, he did. That never happened. Yes, he did. That never happened. You were remembering. We one gave good, him a fucking. You were contract. remembering here's one good you, game. What okay. was his? Be, what was his best contract? Well, here's how. You, yeah, look up his contracts. It fucking went way up after that year. Way up. We from gave what, him like from three hundred thousand and nine hundred thousand. It's you're gonna see millions of dollars. Panama Papers esque stealing of money. Mark Blank contract. Yeah, show me what his contracts were, please. <laughs> Who's your least favorite? I will tell you, Mark Blunt never made more than $8 million in a year. Yeah, but it's hard to go by that with average salary, $6 million. So I'm going to say he did make more than $8 million in a year. 
When? <laughs> when was that? Well, well, we're finding that. Who is your least favorite? Oh, wow. You got a fast modem, huh? My least favorite Celtic? Scalabrini. Scalabrini? Yep. Well, he had a great sense of humor about himself. He did not. He's, he made it look like he did now. When he was actually here, he would go on the radio and talk about how he was offended when people would start going like, Scalabrini, Scalabrini. Yeah, but that was the thing. Like, I'm and a that, legitimate and NBA player. He was a legitimate NBA he player. He was, and I respect that. But he's also now, like, he's basically changing history because now he wants to be, like, the jovial guy and pretend yeah, he, that that when, was what was going on. When he trashed the people one-on-one, -on -one, that was that awesome. Was fun. That was fucking great. That was fun. The whole white mamba thing. I think that's fun. He's pretty funny mm -hmm. on podcasts when he goes on it. He was okay. He seems to have, this guy is a fucking thief. No, Scalabrini was making like $5 million a year every year, and he never, ever was that, good enough to actually play. They just showed play. a picture of him, too. This, the other thing about Mark Blunt, is he actually seemed like a pretty cool guy. Mark Blunt, good human being. Good human being. My buddy JR said he used to see him at this cigar bar on Gloucester Street all the time, and he'd come in on like a robe and he'd smoke cigars. He's very chill. He liked, nice. liked to listen to jazz in the locker room, apparently. Oh, yeah. So maybe some of these guys just don't like playing basketball, which is fine. I just wish they wouldn't submarine my team for two years. Huh. Right. Well, okay, but we know his average salary was about six and a half mil. Yeah. So it must have... He must have had a 10 year, $10 million a year deal in there. That must have happened. Here we go. Where? Okay. Almost nine. One year. One year, eight, five. Oh, and that was with the Heat, huh? Yeah, and never with us. There you go. Well, no, because I think this is when they were signing there five you go. year deals. This is when they were signing five year deals, though. So, yeah. It, the contract, what do they call it? Accelerated? Accelerated? All right. For what purpose? What was the word where the number goes up? Accelerated is what increased. Accelerated contract, wouldn't we say earlier? Fournier starts at 17 mm -hmm. and goes up. What was the word you used? I don't know. Couldn't be exponential because that would be billions. Yeah, it's not exponential. <laughs> <laughs> Huge typo mistake. Not exponential. Throw an exponential in there. <laughs> Man, we're making people angry. Who's I'm, glad, your, I'm glad I don't have a career to. Like, who's, your least, uh, who's your least Mark, favorite? Brian oh, Scalabrini, Mark Lumpy. They could ruin it for us. But Scalabrini, I don't really hate any of the Celtics. I thought they were all fine. Scalabrini just made me mad because I felt like he changed his story later on when he wanted to be like the, the friendly play-by-play -play guy or color guy. Okay. It's like I, I know on, for he a was, fact he was the only guy on the 08 team that voted for McCain. He voted for McCain? Yeah, yeah. Staun he's a staunch Republican. Ugh, yeah, I, I like him even less. <laughs> Yeah, somebody said he was anti-vax, too. He's anti-vax? Yeah. Wow. Is he the guy that said the Holocaust wasn't that bad? No, that was the Texas school board. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shit, I'm always fucking those two up. <laughs> the, the Texas school board. Remember when the fans would chant for the Texas school board to play during garbage time? <laughs> Texas school board isn't a bad band name. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. If you had to pick a band name that was based on sports, what would your band name be? Hmm. I'm going to come back to that. All right. Circle back to it. Paul, mark that. We're going to edit that out. <laughs> edit that I, don't, out. I don't know why. I feel like threw out an improv challenge. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to see if I can come up with it by the end. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the second rule of improv? You can the kick The second it. rule of improv is, yeah. Punch, think think about it, it for a little while. Kick it down to the curb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you can't, yes. <laughs> yeah, I believe it's yes, yes later. <laughs> Get back to him on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, audience, after intermission, we're going to have something that fucking kills. Let me go back and do some kills. writing. Kills. Let me go back and do some writing. <laughs> All right, before we wrap this up, uh, we got to talk about the Bruins. Well, I know they sleep during the winter. Yep. And they, they like salmon. Yeah, they forage and they've got to like eat a lot beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when they wake up again, they're good. Yeah. All right. We cover the Bruins, and uh, I think we are good. All right, you got anything to plug before we wrap this up? I'm doing a show in 10 minutes. Everybody come. Yeah, there you go. I'm also doing a show in 15 minutes. Uh, basic bear facts. There you go. Bruins. Hey, we nailed it. I think we were right about all of that. Hey, hey hibernation is on there. There you go. Go Bruins. All right, um, so this has been Boston Centric. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'm Mike. That's Dan. EJ Murphy. Producer Paul hanging out over in the corner. And uh, we'll be back in a week. Take care, everybody. 
Party. That was fun. That was fun.